Hi there, I'm Mike, and what I have for you today is my favorite video to do of the year. So, basically what I'm saying is it's all downhill from here. <laughs> oh, oh boy, what a way to start the year. I have my top 10, but also worst figures of the Black Series in 2021. So let's get into it. I'm gonna start with my worst figure list here, and I'm not gonna do like a top 10 for them. I'm gonna sort of give them awards for why I think they're bad, and maybe you agree, and maybe you don't. Uh, either way, we can come to terms, they're just toys. But let's start with these figures should have used soft goods. The first one on the list here is Rey, Dark Side Rey. I almost gave her the who asked for this award, but at the same time, I think there are people out there that legitimately wanted a Dark Side Rey. I just wasn't one of them, at least not yet. And this figure unfortunately didn't sway me over because of its use of the molded skirt. I'm not a big fan. It basically makes her like one of the old Power of the Force 2 figures where the bottom was just a chunk of plastic and they didn't actually have any legs. Her legs are superfluous. The skirt does the bulk of the standing because of the rubber mold and I'm just not a big fan. Otherwise, it's actually a pretty good figure with a great likeness. Just, you know, not a character that's in the movie very long, but that's actually true for a lot of Star Wars figures. But the winner of this category, the real winner, but I, I, I gave it to both, but the real winner is Bib Fortuna. Man, I was so excited for Bib Fortuna. And if you haven't gotten Bib yet, I completely get it. He's not available everywhere. He's just got so much molded rubber on him. It's really, really tough to get him to stand because it's not quite long enough to hold him up like it is for Ray, uh, but it is very heavy, so he tends to want to fall over. And it's hard to position his ankles because the robes get in the way, and it's hard to get him in any good arm poses because the robes get in the way. It's just, it's all really thick molded rubber plastic, and I'm just, I'm not a fan. I wish we'd gotten some kind of cloth goods. That would have been way better on this. Moving down to my next category, we have Betrayed by Concept Art. These are figures that don't match what we got in their medium show, whatever movie. Uh, in this case, it's a show, and it's the same show. The reason here is most likely because Hasbro was working from concept art, and it wasn't finalized, and what we got doesn't match what we got on screen. So the first one is Captain Rex. Now you might be thinking, Mike, Captain Rex is great. I love Captain Rex. I agree. Except for this Bad Batch version is a worse version of the vastly superior uh, regular release version. Uh, and you might have bought this one because it was hard to get the regular release version. He came out in 2018. He's been released a couple times, but for some reason people still don't have them. Uh, they're collecting late, whatever. Uh, this one is good in a pinch, but the, the poncho, while great, gets in the way of the helmet. Uh, so the helmet doesn't sit over his face very flush. Uh, he's missing a pauldron. His helmet is inaccurate and only half painted. Uh, these little minor nitpick issues are visual and mostly probably because they were working off concept art, in which case it probably would have been accurate. Uh, but the real winner here is unfortunately one of my favorites in the line tech oh this killed me to put him in my bottom because i love the figure for the most part with the helmet on it looks great but with the helmet off i mean he's missing his glasses that's like a defining feature i mean i'm not saying that's who he is but tech without glasses you don't see that like what what the heck so i i really think hasbro messed up here i don't really have anything else to say about it other than i was disappointed the next category i have is worst re-release now there have been a lot of re-releases this year, uh, more than any other year probably, and it's gonna probably continue, continue to happen, mostly because people are getting into this line late. They weren't collecting from the beginning like I was, and they've missed a lot of figures, so I don't begrudge anyone being happy about re-releases, and I don't really begrudge Hasbro for doing it. I bought Han Solo here because of the Power of the Force 2 packaging, and I was looking forward to getting the updated face, because the original Han Solo face is terrible. This one does have a better one, but, the problem here is they didn't update the paint on the rest of his body. So there's a noticeable difference between his face and his neck. It looks like he's been working in the sun all day, but the rest of his body's been covered up. So he's tan here and like pasty white the rest of his body. And then lastly, my prize for the worst figure of the year. And this is here for many reasons, but it's Grief Karga. Oh man, when they announced Grief, I was super excited. I love the character in The Mandalorian. 
I love Carl Weathers. I wanted a Carl Weathers uh, figure, but what we got absolutely looks nothing like Carl Weathers. It's it's awful. It's a terrible figure. It's it's not interesting visually, but the biggest offender here is he he doesn't look anything like Carl Weathers, and that's that's a big problem. Uh, your figure should look like the figure, <laughs> and and it's exacerbated now because we have the the digital painting, which means that it's more noticeable when the sculpt is off and the sculpt here way off. It looks like Carl Weathers wasn't even the base. I don't even know who they sculpted here, but it certainly wasn't Carl Weathers. Uh, and, and that's it for my for my worst figures of the year. Let me know what you thought of downstairs. Let's move on to my top, top 10 figures of the year. This is what everyone has been waiting for. This is what you've been listening to me drone on and on about things I didn't like to, to get to. And I am going to start with my honorable mentions. These are the figures that make it from 11 to 15. Uh, there aren't in any order. I'm, I didn't I didn't bother putting them in any order. You can just, yeah, these are them right here. If any of these are in your top 10, cool. Uh, I'm glad you like them more than me. There are a lot of these figures that didn't make it for very specific reasons. And I don't want to go into them all except for maybe crosshairs here. But uh, if I get into it, it's a spoiler. And that might have spoiled it already just saying that. So uh, let's move on. But these are the figures that I like, I love. They, they were really hard for me not to put in the top 10 but they didn't make it for whatever reason. So here we go. Starting with the number 10 spot, we have Boba Fett from Tython. I just got him a couple weeks ago. He came from Dorkside Toys. You might not have gotten him yet. I agonized over whether or not this was even a 2021 release. And for me, I decided since he's been found in stores and since I got him shipped to me from a, an actual store. I'm counting him because I don't want to wait another year to get him onto a list. He is good. He's a good figure. I like this look. It's weird to say it's Boba Fett because it doesn't look anything like Boba Fett. And I think for me, that's part of the charm. I like this era of the story. It's a great likeness to Tamora Morrison. Uh, he's got soft goods, which is great. Uh, they're removable. Uh, lots of great little things here. So definitely top 10 material, but only at the 10 spot. Moving down one, we have his partner in crime lording. We have Fennec Shan. Now Fennec, and actually both Boba, but not that version. Uh, Fennec here was in my top 10 wish list of 2021 and we got her and I'm very excited to get her. Uh, I did have a hard time if you're watching the live stream that I did where I opened these up. I had a hard time getting her blaster in her hand, but once I got it in there, it looks great. The likeness looks great. Mwah! Absolutely love it. It was hard not to get her higher. It's tough when you get a new figure not to put them at the top, top, top because they're new and they have that shininess still that some of the other figures kind of lose a little bit. So I tried to be a little level headed with where I'm putting these. So she's in the number nine spot. She's good. She's good. Definitely top 10 material. And then number eight, we have Casca Reeves. Now you might have noticed that I put Bo Katan in the honorable mention slot. I just had a hard time putting both of them in the top 10. When it came down to it, I love the, this shade of blue on this armor because they're basically the same figure. They're, the paint's a little different. Obviously their head's different and she only has one little holster and as opposed to Bo-Katan's two and that's accurate to the screen. But I just, I love the coloring here way more than I love Bo-Katan's. So uh, that, that right there was my was the reason she made the list and Bo-Katan didn't. Uh, just because I, I didn't, I couldn't put both of them in this top 10. I wanted more figures in. All right, number seven, we have Q90, or just zero, if you will. This is my Richard Iowate bot. I absolutely love this figure. He has a hard time standing. I think his ankles are a little loose. I could hit it with a little bit of that kiki fixed loose joint stuff. But uh, other than that, I love the new molding on the legs, the arms. He's basically a protocol droid, but great. I love the webbing. I love the paint on it. I love the paint on his forearm over here. I just love everything about this figure. He's a bounty hunter droid, and those are my favorite kinds, I guess. All right, and then my number six spot might be a surprise to some people. It is Arc Trooper Echo. I had a real hard time not putting him higher, but I like the other ones just that much more. Echo is great and one of the few figures on this list that I've actually reviewed. So if you want to go see my review of him, it's on my channel, go take a look if you wanna get my full thoughts. But uh, suffice to say, I really do like this figure. He's not perfect. Uh, again, another one of those contenders for I wish they'd used soft goods instead of rubber. But at the same time, there's a lot of different colors here. So I don't know if that made it easier, but uh, just, just a real good figure. Very, very surprising figure too. All right, so now we're moving into top five category and this is where it got harder. 
This is where I really had to separate the good from the great. Uh, at the number five spot here, we have Crosshair. Uh, and this is the Imperial version. I love Crosshair's design, both the regular Bad Batch and the Imperial version. But the Imperial version won out uh, just a little bit over the, uh, the Bad Batch version, just because I like the black instead of that, that gray. Because uh, they are mostly the same, although his helmet is a little bit more Stormtrooper-esque than you know, his Bad Batch version. I think that's another reason why I kind of prefer this a little bit. I really do like the more standardized Trooper. This is another one also where uh, I think this was probably in the concept art and uh, Hasbro was working on that. So it's probably accurate to what Hasbro got, uh, but not accurate to what we got in the show. But again, small nitpicks to an otherwise fantastic figure. I love Crosshair, I love both, but I didn't want them both in the top 10. He's my number five spot, leaving my number four spot open for the Clone Wars Obi-Wan. Now I haven't reviewed this and I want to. No, I did review this. I absolutely did review. This again is another one of those figures that I have reviewed if you wanna go see it. It is the best Obi-Wan Kenobi made to date in the Black Series. Uh, it's a good mixture of brand new parts with clone trooper parts. The likeness is amazing. The articulation is great. I absolutely love everything about this figure. It is so good, but only, I guess, top four good. But still, that's real good for the year because there were like 99 figures released this year. Number three, we have a surprise for me. This is Asajj Ventress, and I absolutely love her so much. I love the felt cloth material they used for this mixed in with the kind of rubber goods. I don't know why they don't do this more often. Like this is incredible. This looks great. Why couldn't they just do this with Ray? This is what they did it with this. Why couldn't they do it with Ray? I don't know. She looks so great. I love her figure. I love her look. You can get her in such good poses, running, sassy. Ah, oh, so good. Definitely, definitely worth picking up. And my number two spot, we have the Return of the Jedi. Boba Fett. I really like this figure. I dig it. I love the new, completely new molded body. Uh, I didn't love having to fix the head, but it wasn't that hard to do. And again, uh, if you want to know more information, I've actually done a review on this as well. But I just, I really like this figure. I love the accessories. Definitely worth the deluxe price, in my opinion, although I do wish he came with a flight stand instead of some of those big, uh, the accessories that he came with. I don't know. I don't know what Hasbro was thinking with some of those, but uh, again, that's all in my review, so go watch it. But he is fantastic. Definitely a great figure this year, but my number one figure, my absolute number one figure that I still love, that I sit on my desk, hasn't really moved, despite not being with his you know, cohort, with his uh, crewmates, whatever. This is Bad Batch Wrecker. I love Wrecker so much. He's one of my favorite characters in all of Star Wars. I love everything they did with him. I love the face sculpt. I love the fact that his helmet can be worn like he does in the show. He's got this big old knife. He's got his little gun. He's got his backpack. Ah, oh, it's just such a good figure. Tons of details, big and beefy. I love this. This is easily my number one figure of the year and well worth it. So good. I can't believe I haven't reviewed it, honestly, but it came out at a weird time for me. I was just moving and a lot of things were going on, so uh, I kinda kind of slipped by. But if you wanna see me review any of these that I haven't reviewed, let me know down in the comments. Also, I wanna know what your top 10 was. This is my top 10. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you agree with it? Uh, do you have your own? Let me know. I love to read all of the comments. I can't guarantee I'll respond but I'll, I'll do my best. But with that, thank you so much for watching. I hope your 2021 was at least somewhat decent. Uh, that seems to be as best as some people can, can do. Mine wasn't actually too terrible. No one close to me died in 2021 like they did in 2020, so uh, there's that. So uh, I hope yours was also okay. Uh, and if not, I hope your 2022 is better. I love to thank these people here for supporting me on Patreon at a Black Series level or higher. Thanks so much, guys. It means a lot to me that you do this. If you want to see your name on here, you can head to my Patreon. I do post some things on there that you don't get anywhere else, but mostly uh, you just go to help out the channel because doing this isn't free. It's not just about buying toys. Uh, there's a lot to going into buying lights, 
uh, you know, hosting videos, uh, paying for things that you just don't realize cost money for YouTube. But yeah, that's that's it. Uh, like, share, subscribe. You know, the whole YouTube thing that they say at the end of every YouTube video. If you could do that, that'd be cool too. It does go to help out a lot. But with that, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for getting to this moment right now. And I'll see you later. Bye.